Hello world, I'm Evan Gudmestead, an instructor of application and web development at Rankin Technical College. Uh, recently, I had a, a friend of a friend recommend me look into Microsoft Semantic Kernel. Now, this, uh, this fellow was a business owner and a software developer for 20 years, and he recommended this tool, Semantic Kernel, that will allow you to build an AI agent. And why I found that interesting is because while I can bring in an API key and, and a, a text box to, to interface like for an LLM for OpenAI's ChatGPT, I can bring that into my software pretty easily. An AI agent would actually allow me to um, have that chat, build a chat bot that can answer questions based on my own data set. And so if I have a database full of information and I want a chat bot, you know, a customer has a question um, based on my data set, the, the chat bot could respond based on the data in my own database. So we're not just using ChatGPT to answer broad questions. Now I can bring in business specific data. Uh, and so the beginning of this process is, is to learn a tool like Semantic Kernel, Microsoft Semantic Kernel. Um, and so by the end of this video, um, I'm just going to show some basic getting started steps. So these are the first steps that I had to learn to take. Well, I will be able to instantiate a kernel and load a plugin in that semantic kernel. So these are the very basic getting started. Uh, and you can kind of see here at the end of this running this code, um, that I got a kind of a response from the plugin. And so these are the, the getting started steps for Microsoft Semantic Kernel. These are what I had to do. There's a couple of stumbling blocks. Okay. So, um, to kind of start here, um, the, the place you want to start is, well, the where I started was with the Microsoft documentation. So I'm going to kind of go through this quickly and, and, again, get over the stumbling blocks that I had. Getting started with Semantic Kernel, you can Google search it, come across this article. Um, and you're going to quickly find the repo that you need to clone. And so you kind of open up this repo and clone it using whatever software you want. And so here I've got this repo cloned locally on my computer. And then you're going to open that repo up in VS Code. And so um, when you open this up for the first time, let me close these down a little bit. Um, when you open this up for the first time, it's going to ask you to install some plugins. Um, I still have, it looks like it's still trying to install some plugins, but I just clicked yes to go ahead and install you could see uh, those plugins you can see a couple errors I was getting along the way that I was able to resolve now so that's going to be your first couple of steps go ahead and clone the repo open this up and I'm using C sharp Microsoft.net and so it instructs you to go into the .NET folder under notebooks um, now you start in this first notebook. There's step one, step two. In order to do step one and step two, I've already done this. Um, so let me go ahead and reset my configurations. You do not have to reset your configuration because you haven't done this. Now, before you do step one, it does tell you you need to get an API key. And so you can kind of follow this, and there's two options. There's OpenAI and there's Azure OpenAI. I just went straight to the source, you know, uh, OpenAI was uh, the organization responsible for ChatGPT um, and, and this whole renaissance of uh, LLMs. And so um, go ahead and you will need to create an API key. So this is platform.openai.com uh, where you will need to generate an open uh, or an API key. And so I have two here. Uh, you don't need to. I can actually just delete the one that I'm not using. Uh, but I am using this semantic kernel too. So uh, again, go to this URL, platformopenai.com. Uh, create a new key. And you can see it's hidden here. And I have that copied and pasted to my notepad. Um, 
it's too long for the internet to be able to read it anyway. So I not at risk for sharing that sensitive information because uh, it's just a really long, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So that was kind of the first step. And um, so there's API keys. You'll need some of that there. And I also need my org ID. So you will need those two pieces of information. You'll need an API key, number one, copy and paste that into notepad if you want, and you will need an org ID. And so once you have those two pieces of information, these what are called notebooks are kind of new to me, but they kind of step you through uh, the code. We are we are not using Azure OpenAI, so the first step is to go ahead and run that little Boolean. And all this is doing is setting some variables in a settings file for us. Um, step two says run the following code, um, and you'll need to uncomment out this line here. It says uncomment this if you are using OpenAI and you need to set the org ID. So I had to uncomment this. Now when you run it, you're going to notice we get prompted for those two pieces of information up top. It says, please enter your open A, uh, open AI API key. So I'm going to come into here. Again, this is too long. You can't see it all. I'm going to copy that and paste. Oop, wrong keyboard. Let's try that again. Copy and paste. So that's setting the API key. And now it says, please enter your org ID. So I have that copied right here. Copy that. Again, I showed you where to get that on the website and paste. And that's not that's not sensitive. And I get, hey, both of those are configured. It says, if the code above doesn't show error, you're good to go and run other notebooks. So um, again, a couple of stumbling blocks in there, just a couple of small things. Um, it is worth noting that uh, under billing, okay, um, I loaded $10 um, to get this to work. Now I still have that $10 credit. You can load a $5 credit, um, but in order to get this API key to get responses, you have to, um, you know, throw a couple dollars down. Again, this can be $5. It's less than a, a burrito at Chipotle, you know? So I just paid the $10, call it a learning experience and, and well worth the investment. Um, but I did have to generate the API key. Um, I did have to get my org ID under general, and I did have to load I loaded 10 bucks as you can see. Okay, now, um, now we are under zero, zero, and um, again, if it asks you to install anything, go ahead. Let's go ahead and import these notebooks, make it really easy, import the settings that we just set up and import semantic kernel from NuGet, instantiate the kernel with these two, so I'm getting all green checks, load and run a plugin. And so we get that spinning, it said 1.8 seconds, and ultimately, um, it ran the, the plugin and it output kind of the joke. If you look at the code, it looks like it's just telling time travel to dinosaur age and tell a joke in the dinosaur age. And this is kernel invoke a sync and then return it to the council. But the point is, uh, we've configured our settings using Microsoft, uh, Microsoft uh, Semantic Kernel uh, with OpenAI on the back end. And this is what you need to get started. Now, I'm just starting my learning journey on this. I just wanted to share this with my class as uh, kind of the first steps that I had to take uh, to get Semantic Kernel up and running and configured. Um, more to come. I'm excited for this.